Hey guys, Zach Miner here for Ref3 Games, and we just got into the Torchlight 2 closed beta last night. We're going to bring you guys a full preview soon, but I wanted to give you a little peek at some early game gameplay, as well as show off uh, a couple of the character classes and run down uh, some of the things I noticed in my short time playing it. So, Torchlight 2 is a sequel to the 2009 game from Runic Games, and if you didn't play it, you probably remember hearing about it because it's an action RPG that was developed by a couple guys from the Diablo 2 team. And back in 2009, it had been a while since there was a great click and loot game, and Torchlight 2 definitely filled that void. After coming out on PC and Mac, it later came out on XBLA, and now three years later, we're a week away from Diablo 3. So I think the big question on everyone's mind is if there's room for both of these games, because there is a lot of similarities, as you can probably see. And I'll have some more thoughts on that in a second. But in Torchlight 2, there are four main character classes. There's the Ember Mage, which is your kind of typical mage. Uh, your Berserker, which is your big, fast melee class. The Engineer, who uh, is a melee or ranged character that has some cool mechanical abilities. And the Outlander, which is a uh, ranged guns and magic class. I played a little bit as each of these classes, and although they certainly fit in with your typical action RPG archetypes, there are actually some really nice variants. Um, and they do things a little bit differently than what you might expect. Uh, the Berserker can be played as either a fast monk-like character or as a heavy two-handed tank. The Engineer can also be played as a two-handed heavy melee with a giant hammer or as a ranged heavy with a giant cannon. Uh, that's actually what I played as the most. The cannon is an awesome, awesome ranged weapon. Um, it's got some really nice like splash damage and so you can take out groups of enemies and knock them back. And it's really satisfying. Uh, his abilities also allow him to drop little robots that can either heal him or do damage to others, and he has some uh, melee stomps uh, in another skill tree. I usually love playing as mages in games like this, and the Ember Mage was definitely no exception. Uh, she's got some really rad um, area of effect spells. There, there's this frozen attack that can bounce off walls, and this magma that kind of shoots through enemies, uh, and it's really, really satisfying. And then finally, there's the Outlander, which I did not play for very long. He's kind of an interesting mix of ranged combat and mage, and he has some cool spells like the Sigil that chains between enemies, um, but I didn't play him for too long. Now, as far as character customization goes, you can customize your character's face, hair. You can also choose their pet, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, there's, the, there's like an eagle, there's a ferret, there's a bulldog. Now, if you play Torchlight 1, you're probably pretty familiar with the pet system. Uh, it does damage for you, and you can also send it back to town to either pick up additional potions or to sell some extra loot, which is really handy if you're in the middle of a dungeon and don't want to travel all the way outside. Each class also has a charge bar, which rests um, right above your action bar, and it does different things depending on your character class. It fills up as you kill more and more enemies, and for the Outlander, it increases your critical chance, your attack speed and cast speed, pretty typical. Um, but for your Berserker, when you max out your charge bar, you enter a frenzy mode, and each attack becomes critical to your primary enemy, and it increases your critical chance to secondary enemies around you. For the Engineer, the Engineer actually has some abilities that take up charges, and you don't need them to use the ability, but it increases damage or AoE range, depending on what that ability is. And then for the Ember Mage, once that bar is full, you enter kind of a clear cast state, where you can cast spells without taking away mana. So it adds some kind of cool strategic elements because you can say, okay, so there's a big boss up ahead. Maybe I want to kill some little guys first so that I can run into that battle. I can knock off a couple spells and still have a full mana bar. Or I can save it up and then use all my charges as an engineer later on. It also fades away when you're not killing enemies. So it kind of motivates you to keep the action up. Now for each character class, there are three different skill trees. Although it might be inaccurate to call them trees because the abilities do not branch from one to another. In games like this, you typically have to invest points in a Tier 1 skill in order to unlock a Tier 2 skill. That is not the case here. You can invest a bunch of points in a Tier 1 Fire skill, and then once you get to a certain level, you can jump over to the Frost Tree and invest in a Tier 2 Frost skill, which is really cool. It allows you kind of to mix and match between the different skill trees. On the right hand side, you'll see there is one giant branch for each skill tree. Now those are only for always enabled or passive abilities. And some of those, like for the Ember Mage, allows you to stay in clear cast state for longer or to build up charges easier, stuff like that. Although I didn't get super far in the game yet, it does seem like a really cool system and I like that you don't have to really dedicate yourself to one tree early on. As far as the graphics and the art style goes, I was really impressed. Um, the art style might not appeal to everyone, but it is kind of very cartoony. Uh, it is vibrant, lots of bright colors. 
um, but the textures and everything is super smooth. It looks really good, and unlike Diablo, you can actually zoom in to get a closer look at your character. It's not especially useful when you're trying to do attacks, but if you want to see how cool you look with some new set of armors or some new abilities, it works well for that. So like I was saying, we're going to have a bigger preview uh, coming soon once we get a little bit further in the game. But overall, I, I was really impressed with Torchlight 2. You know, I, I played a lot of the Diablo 3 beta, and even though they're coming out at similar times, um, I think that there is room for both of them. Torchlight 2 is a lot more similar to Diablo 2 than I actually think Diablo 3 is. Diablo 3 makes some really kind of key mechanical changes that might not appeal to everyone. And Torchlight 2 is much more like Diablo 2, but you know, vastly improved. They fixed a lot of the issues that were in that game and that were in Torchlight 1, to be honest. So I think that there is room for both. Also, you know, Torchlight 2 does not require a persistent online connection. It can support LAN play. A lot of people were pissed that Blizzard cut that stuff out of Diablo 3. And Torchlight 2 is only 20 bucks. It's going to be coming out for PC uh, soon. It's in closed beta right now. We're going to be giving away some closed beta keys later on. Um, but yeah, it should be headed to Mac shortly thereafter. And I would guess that we're going to see an XBLA and PSN version down the road. So yeah, that's Torchlight 2. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below um, so we can answer them uh, in the comments or in a later video. And that's it. We'll see you next time.